Now, the, the Minotaur, the Minotaur is down here crying by a little creek. You can't see it because the screen ain't big enough. There's a little, there's a little babbling brook that does the thing leaning down here crying. And the, the, the Minotaur's only friends are like these Cretans, like these near men. And they look up in the sky and they see a revelation up in the sky, an epiphany of her sorrows, a Picassian style painting of her expressing her her, her, her shortcomings, see? And that's Artie. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know how many people in here have ever heard of King Farouk. King Farouk died in the 50s, but King Farouk was considered the last pharaoh. I got fascinated with King Farouk early on. I couldn't believe that somebody lived this decade. This guy really lived decades. Uh, he was spoiled, pardon the expression, shitless. He, he had everything he could ever want. He just run through the country's money. He, he would buy cars, and he, he made a law that only King Farouk could have a red car so the police would leave him alone. Okay. So he's driving these girls around in this red Cadillac, see? King Farouk was going somewhere in one of his cars, and he hit a tree. But he was okay, but the authorities insisted on taking King Farouk to the hospital, see? So he gets into the hospital, and they get him a couple of real pretty nurses. And then his condition gets worse, he gets more nurses. And he starts getting a bunch of nurses periodically, and he's in there for a couple of months in the hospital, and they start shipping nurses over to Europe. So, um, he kept his treatment up for a long, long time. Uh, I don't know what his treatment was. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we got him portrayed here as the living the high life. Okay? Now this scene over here is the ocean with no water in it. All the boats have sunk. See, there's no water in the ocean. But in his mind, he's sailing off in oblivion. See, he's sailing off in the Never Never Land. His brain, okay? he's, he's not concerned with the, the realities of his country. That's so involved in my dissertation here. <laughs> is, that, is that okay? okay here we go. Well, I'm going to go through these things a little faster. Okay, this is about the uh, um, uh, built down man who turned out to be a fake. And uh, the, the English put, put a lot the English put a lot of money on uh, the built down man being real, and it turned out to be a fake. But this this shows that uh, if he had not turned out to be a fake, he'd have been superhuman. Okay, now. Look at this real close. This little girl's got French mouth. <laughs> a doctor says over here, a medical report, little Rachel has French mouth. Okay, here's another one of them lurid ones. This guy, this guy's mind has just opened up a hole of evil here. You know, his lechery and his licentiousness has come to a boiling point here. And uh, his true evil self is off over there to the right, except he's not really equipped to take care of any situation that might come up. Okay. This is about pounding a square hole, square peg in a round hole, or round peg in a square hole, see? Here's this, this, this robber stole the safe, and here comes the posse, and he's trying to shove a square, square safe down the mouth of a round, a round hole with an alligator's throat. Okay, this is another slip off into the psychosis here. This is about a woman, older woman that never had children, that started fixating on a root and adopted the root as a child. Okay. Leave it there. <laughs> okay. This is uh don't feed the dog at the table. See, here, this, this dad and the daughter are having fun giving french fries to the dog at the table, and this poor bastard starving to death eating out of the garbage can over here. Okay. Um, Yoko Ono had this pain for a while. I think she got it to that entertainer pink. This is uh, called Tickle Pink, and this is a uh, Overdramatic scene of uh, Italian clowns dragging uh, a tube of magenta pink 
over a mountain pass. You know, suffering and whatever it takes to tickle pink. Okay. Um, child bride, what can I tell you? Uh, I mean, uh, the idea of a child bride today is reprehensible. But what if you took that, that image, that feeling of a child bride, and you, you made a decal of it, put it on the side of a rocket ship? <laughs> okay, now here's a, a, a clown that lives a real wild life. Uh, can, you, can you find the bird in the picture? See, the, guy's, the clown's shocking the girl. Do you know where the bird is in the picture? The bird's in the bird cage, in the snake. <laughs> okay, this is another one of them plays on innocence. You now I do a sensitive, emotional thing here. That's you know it's polyannic. You know you can grasp. If you just had that much of the picture, you'd be okay, huh? And then you see where you you, you, you see where the, the flowers are coming from. So you see where the pansies are coming from. This is. Demonic hag is cutting them, cutting them pansies off her tail. Okay. Now this is, I, I don't know. <laughs> See, she's about ready to take off. Now, I knew a girl like this. I tailored this after a girl I knew. And, uh, Met her at Roth Studios, and she looked just like that. Uh, maybe I, maybe she played on my. my I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, she's about ready to take off on that Harley, and this poor homeless guy's about ready to wake up here. Okay, now. Um, the name of this painting is the Fair Green. Now, a lot of artists will not touch green. Salvador Dali avoids it. Look at the Dali paintings. No green. A lot of paintings. Stay away from the green. Advertising. Stay away from the green. Products in the grocery shelf. Stay away from the green. Green will not sell. So I got a painter here that's done a painting of that landscape, and there's no green there, nor is there any in his palette. See? Because he has the fear of green. <laughs> Edward Shea bought that painting. Okay, now this one here, I don't know what to tell you about this one. This, this guy steals people's personalities. So you see all the mannequins, people over there without personalities over to, over to the left. You can see that uh, somebody's taking their, taking their personalities away. And it's this character here who has no personalities. This head's a book of different personalities, and still he's not content. Okay. I don't know what to tell you, but this is, this is a guy that's predicating. He's telling it like it is. And it took this female stenographer here to take down what he's saying, or what he was saying would be like a tree falling in the forest. Okay. This is, a, this is about a guy that's... Uh, Spend his life trying to make people happy, and as I guess he's rented space on a building here, a smile with some of them. And he dresses up like this cartoon character, and he's got a truck, and he drives around, and I don't know how he'd make a living. Okay, this is self explanatory here. A painting like this is like some of the paintings I have over at the show. Uh, this is what's called a, a floating foreground, a floating subject. The background is wiped on there. This, this is the way you do a real fast painting. This is the way Salvador Dali and Yves Tange and a number of painters did. This is the way they used to paint the walls in ancient Rome, Pompeii. You have a color, then you transfer an image on it, and then the, you can just play with the background. See, this painting happened really fast. Right? The background just wiped on with a big brush or a rag. Okay, this is, a, this is at a cockfight where they put little knights on the back of the roosters. Okay? Little cardboard knights on the back of the roosters. Okay? So it looks like a medieval tournament. 